Alison Riskina was moving in with her new husband, so she rented out her Toronto condo. Earlier this year, she was told by the property manager that the condo was being rented on Airbnb, something both she and the condo board didn't allow. It was like the bottom dropped out of my stomach. It's like she's in my condo that just as an enterprise, not as a home. And so that was a really awful feeling. Riskina went online and found her condo had been listed repeatedly. The person listing it wasn't her tenant. It was someone she'd never even heard of. Knowing that you've been lied to and your trust has been violated has been a very jarring experience. The tenant told CBC News it was her boyfriend who listed the condo on Airbnb and said she was unaware it wasn't allowed. The City of Toronto gave the boyfriend approval. The city says renters only need to show photo ID that lists the address as their principal residence. There is sometimes additional follow-up. Riskina says that's not good enough. They need to either ask for a lease, um, call the landlord, um, ask for proof of ownership, reach out to the property manager. When Riskina tried to evict the tenant for breaching the lease terms, the tenant asked for $6,000 to leave. Demands like that are becoming increasingly common, according to this paralegal who's representing Riskina. All landlords know that the quickest way for them to get the tenant out is doing a cash for keys, meaning that they pay them X amount of money and they vacate commonly within 30 to 60 days. There are backlogs at landlord-tenant dispute boards across the country, where wait times for hearings balloon during the pandemic. Airbnb says it's taken down the listing for Riskina's condo, and she has come to a settlement with her tenant. But the dispute has cost her thousands of dollars in legal fees and unpaid rent, and she says she now plans to sell her condo. Ryan Patrick-Jones, CBC News, Toronto.